Linda? Hi, Rosa. Hi. To your left. Oh. Uh, congratulations, Bill. <laughs> Thank you. In the first fight, you had a lot of success shifting to your left and throwing the left. Uh, that didn't seem to be as successful. What adjustments did she make, and what counter adjustments were you going after to try and capitalize on that? Um, she had a lot better, uh, I think, range this time. Um, you know, her, her uh, I think her conditioning was, and she just stepped it up, you know, she improved in general. And um, I had talked to her, you know, this entire camp, I was just thinking, uh, I was just thinking about how, how she did it for five times in a row, <laughs> you know, so it's, uh, I have a lot of respect for her. And one last question. Was there ever any thought about not fighting after the nonsense in the bus? Yeah, I, I did. Um, but I, I think a lot of times leading up to many fights, I, I think that, or I'll, I'll doubt myself or I question myself, but the voice was strong this time. So what do you do to get yourself through that and kind of move past that stage? Um, you know, I just, I've just been in tough spots before. I've, I've had manual fights before and they were, you know, like autopilot kind of thing. And um, this was just another level of that, a new challenge, a new, you know, new development in my growth. And, and so I welcome that. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to, I don't know, just prove to myself that I, I can once again face my fears and it'll it'll pay off. And you won the first two rounds of the fight and then they gave the only round they gave her was the third and then you got the fourth and the fifth. Um, when you lose that third round, what do you do to kind of, it seemed like maybe the momentum was shifting a little bit and then you got it back. What, what do you do there? I just kept saying I'm the best. <laughs> just kept saying that to myself, I'm the best. And uh, eventually I just I just let go, let go of, uh, just had to accept that my feet aren't moving as uh, well or, you know, just instead of, I just kind of abandoned the, the game plan a little bit and just went out there and had fun and was just like, screw it, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna slug instead of trying to be quick right now because it's obviously not working. And I know you kind of acknowledge that, you know, with everything you Joanna said about the first fight, you said maybe she did have a bad weight cut, maybe that did affect her performance. And you saw her tonight uh, and she says she is, you know, 100%. Did you feel a different fighter in there? Um, I felt like she stepped up her respect for me, I think. Um, so yeah, I think, and she, she did improve, I think, in all areas, not just, I don't think it's just the weight cut either, you know, I think that had something to do with it maybe, but, you know, she, she did, um, she did improve. And, I know you don't want to look too far ahead, this is a top five round fight, but who do you see as, like, the, the next big challenger for you at this weight class? I don't know, I don't know. Just, just um, kind of <laughs> I mean, that seems to, that, that's definitely a, a name that pops into my head, you know. Um, but so far, just, just one day at a time. Let's well, so talk about the, the, the game plan coming into this one. You know, you got the late takedown. I think you, in the first matchup and this matchup, I think we all thought your grappling might play a big role. And instead, it seems like you just wanted to go straight out there and slug it out. I mean, was there a reason that, or was that in the game plan at all to grapple, or if not, was there a reason? Um, you know, my game plan is always punch him in the face, hit your back, and choke him out. And then I kind of just have to go with what, what, um, what is, you know, what I'm given in the fight as well as what I, what I have to work with. So, you know, my, uh, I just, I didn't feel like I had the snap in my body for some reason. You know, I think it just maybe an adrenaline dump before the fight even happened. Might have had something to do with it. I'm not really sure, but this is, this is a, a lot of pressure, a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of things to overcome, but I did it, so. I was gonna say, because of that, I mean, as dominant as the first win was, is there any part of this that's maybe a little more satisfying, like maybe knowing that you didn't have your A game and had to make some adjustments and doing it over the course of five rounds, is there any kind of victory you can take out of that? I think so, you know, um, but I, I, I've, uh, I've done it before, you know, where I feel like, okay, then I know exactly what I need to improve next time, you know, so. Um, I guess this is just another level of that, and, um, and I don't know. I just I just really enjoy the fight, so this is gonna go down as one of my, I guess, another great experience. All right, so last thing for me, Rose. I mean, we talked about just now that there was thoughts of maybe not fighting. Can you just talk to I me? Mean, what was so difficult about that the, the moment in the bus? And you know, we, we heard a lot of reports that, that you were pretty shaken up about it. What, what went through your mind, and what was so so difficult about it for you? Um, 
Well, the chair nearly came at my window, you know, uh, thank, thankfully to the bus driver, he was, you know, he was on point. He, he was backing up the, the bus as it uh, came to my window, but it ended up hitting Michael Kesa in the head instead, you know, unfortunately. So thanks, Michael. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know, it just, it, it shook me up just because it was such a, like, I didn't know how far it was gonna escalate. You know, all the guys inside, they, they wanted to, they wanted to fight back, they wanted to go, you know, jump out of the bus, but I'm like, I don't know if they gonna open the door and they gonna all come in and who, you know, they're obviously not directly after me, but I'm just caught in this scenario, so I don't know. Um, my imagination goes crazy <laughs> and just through all the things that I've been through. Um, in the past, I know that anybody can have a gun or a knife or, you know, we don't we don't know. And so my, my, I jumped to the negative pretty quickly and, uh, so yeah, there was a lot of it was a lot of thoughts going into this fight, um, but I'm I'm just grateful to be to be in one piece and uh, to be happy, healthy, and safe. Well, it was last year day. How did it feel to hear a news? So when you when you finally heard it, how did that feel? Um, how how do I feel about a new or? Hear, hear Bruce Buffer say a new. Instant. Instant. <laughs> like I don't know if I heard that. <laughs> no. Um, it is pretty cool, you know. Uh, I have to, I uh, have to get used to that, you know. It's a, uh, it's pretty nice. Just been talked to how Trevor, when she made that just in the third round, it seemed like Trevor kind of calmed you down going into that fifth round. What did he say to you to kind of get you like refocus and really get that last round? Uh, he asked me if I was having fun, and I said heck yeah. <laughs> so um, that, that's, I think the key tonight was just to let go and and not worry about. You know, not not treating it so much like a, a job, and just just go out there and have fun, and whatever happens, happens. There's a lot of people throwing out um, Carolina's name as a next opponent. Is that somebody you want to see the events at loss, or it just it doesn't matter? Um, I definitely like to write that wrong. I think she's she's a great competitor, and I um, I have a lot of respect for her as well. So um, at the same time, there's you know there's all kinds of uh, uh, Strawweight competitors out there, but she's definitely one on one on the list. 